Welcome to this technical comparison of two widely used 50 ohm coaxial cables in amateur radio, RG213 and LMR400. This presentation is aimed at ham radio enthusiasts and station builders who need detailed insight into cable performance for various radio frequency bands and installation conditions. We'll dissect the differences in construction, frequency support, attenuation, power handling, and outdoor survivability between RG213, a mil-spec standard cable, and LMR400, a modern low-loss alternative. Our focus is practical, what matters most for performance in real ham station deployments. From choosing the right feed line for base HF station to optimizing high-frequency links and portable rigs, this presentation will help you make informed decisions tailored to your operating style and environment. Let's get started. The core physical differences between RG213 and LMR400 begin at the construction level, which significantly influences electrical performance and mechanical handling. RG213, following its military specification heritage, employs a stranded copper inner conductor and solid polyethylene dielectric encased in a single layer of bare copper braid and PVC jacket. This design grants a good flexibility and mechanical ruggedness, ideal for field use. Conversely, LMR400 represents a modern low-loss cable architecture. It utilizes a solid copper clad aluminum conductor and a low-loss foam polyethylene dielectric wrapped in a combination of aluminum foil and tinned copper braid. These layers improve RF shielding and maintain low attenuation, especially at higher frequencies. The default PE jacket provides superior UV resistance and weather durability. Electrically, the velocity factor, a measure of signal speed through a cable, is a key differentiator. RG213 solid dielectric gives it a 66% velocity factor, while the foam dielectric in LMR400 raises this to approximately 84% enhancing phase stability and efficiency. These structural nuances directly shape their performance in ham applications. In terms of frequency range and operational capacity, RG213 and LMR400 serve different ends of the amateur radio spectrum. RG213 performs best from HF up to VHF with a usable upper limit around 1 GHz. Is particularly effective in the 1 through 30 megahertz range and works reasonably well through the 144 megahertz and 440 megahertz bands, though signal loss becomes an issue when increasing frequency. LMR400 significantly expands this frequency range, supporting operators from DC through 6 gigahertz. This includes not only all traditional ham bands, but also high frequency microwave bands such as the 1.2 gigahertz or 23 centimeters, 2.4 gigahertz, 13 centimeters and even up to 5.7 gigahertz or five centimeters. Its foam dielectric and double shielding maintain signal integrity over high frequencies. Both cables maintain a 50 ohm impedance compatible with ham equipment. However, LMR 400 superior shielding combining aluminum foil and copper braid provides enhanced EMI rejection. This makes it particularly advantageous in high frequency or noise sensitive environments. When comparing RG213 and LMR400 in terms of power handling, several distinctions emerge. RG213 boasts a significantly higher voltage rating, up to 5,000 volts peak, which makes it a robust choice for high-power HF transmitters, especially under mismatch conditions when using open wire feeders. However, LMR400 outperforms RG213 in continuous power capacity at higher frequencies due to its lower attenuation. At 144 MHz, it can carry up to 1.5 kilowatts, compared to 600 watts for RG213 over a 100-foot run. This advantage becomes even more pronounced at UHF. LMR400 can sustain 800 watts at 440 MHz, while RG213 drops down to a few hundred watts. At microwave frequencies, RG213 is particularly unusable for any significant power levels due to extreme loss. LMR400 remains viable up to 6 GHz, carrying moderate power in short runs. For high power VHF, UHF, or GHz operations, LMR400 is a clear choice. Efficient, safer, and cooler under load. Signal loss is where the performance gap between RG213 and LMR400 becomes most visible, especially as operating frequencies climb. At HF, 1.8 to 30 MHz, both cables perform very well, with losses under 1 dB per 100 feet. Here the difference between the two is often under 0.5 dB and generally inconsequential for most station setups. In the VHF and UHF bands, however, the disparity grows. At 144 MHz, 
RG213 exhibits about 2.6 dB loss per 100 feet compared to 1.5 dB for LMR400. This means nearly twice the power loss through RG213. The pattern holds true at 440 MHz where LMR400 maintains a 2.7 dB 100 foot profile versus the 4.9 dB for RG213. An enormous difference when receiving weak signals or transmitting at distance. Beyond 1 GHz, RG213 becomes nearly impractical with losses ranging from 8 dB to over 30 dB per 100 feet. In contrast, LMR400 retains manageable loss levels, for example, 4.7 dB at 1.2 GHz and 10.8 dB at 5.8 GHz. These properties make LMR400 an important choice for GHz band work, while RG213 remains suitable mainly for HF and short VHF runs. Flexibility and physical handling can make or break an installation, especially when coaxial cable needs to weave through complex paths or supporting moving components like rotor-mounted antennas. Here, RG213 has an advantage. It uses a stranded copper conductor and has a solid polyethylene dielectric, making it robust yet pliable. This allows for repeated coiling and flexing, ideal for portable and emergency setups. On the other hand, LMR400 uses a solid copper clad aluminum center conductor which contributes to its lower loss, but it reduces flexibility. While the foam dielectric allows for a tighter one-time bend radius, such as one inch, repeated flexing is discouraged. For dynamic environments or installations with vibration or movement, RG213 holds up better, unless one uses LMR400 UF Ultraflex. Despite being more rigid, LMR400 is lighter, which reduces mechanical strain on long feed lines. This is useful for tall vertical runs or suspended cables. Still, care must be taken not to force LMR400 into tight curves near connectors which could lead to damage. When used outdoors, coaxial cable must endure sunlight, moisture, temperature extremes, and mechanical wear. Both RG213 and LMR400 are designed to be weather resistant, but they differ in materials that affect long-term durability. RG213 typically features a PVC outer jacket, High quality variants use a non-contaminating and UV resistant formulation to allow them to survive for many years outdoors. Still, PVC is generally more susceptible to UV degradation over time, and periodic inspections for brittleness and cracking are advisable. LMR400, in contrast, uses a polyethylene jacket, naturally more UV stable and resilient. This makes it ideal for continuous exposure in rooftop or tower environments. Times Microwave also offers LMR400 DB, a direct burial version with water blocking gel for underground use, providing an extra layer of protection against moisture ingress. In either case, good weatherproofing practices like sealing connectors and using drip loops enhance longevity. Still, for critical or high exposure installations, LMR400 holds the advantage due to its jacket and available burial grade variants. Cost and availability are important and practical considerations when selecting coaxial cable for ham radio use. RG213 enjoys widespread production and availability. It's manufactured by numerous companies including Belden, Pasternak, and many generic brands. This competition keeps prices relatively low, ranging from $1 to $2 per foot, depending on brand and quantity. In contrast, LMR400 is a proprietary cable type from Times Microwave, although many vendors now offer comparable variants. The more advanced construction and lower loss performance come at a premium. Prices for genuine LMR400 range from $1.50 to $2.50 per foot. Non-branded equivalents may cost slightly less, but might not match the same specs or shielding. In terms of sourcing, RG213's long-standing status as a mil-spec cable makes it more universally available, especially in older or international supply chains. LMR400 is broadly available in amateur radio and wireless sectors, but occasionally limited in some global regions. For projects on a budget or needing large quantities, RG213 is often preferred, while LMR400 justifies its cost in high-performance installations. Choosing the right cable depends heavily on your specific ham radio application. For HF base stations operating in the 1.8 to 30 MHz range, RG213 offers an optimal balance of cost, power handling, and flexibility. LMR400 also performs well at these frequencies, but its extra cost may not be justifiable when the attenuation advantage is minimal. For VHF and UHF, especially microwave frequencies from 144 MHz up to 5.8 GHz, LMR400 is clearly the superior choice. It maintains much lower signal loss and handles higher power without overheating, 
making it ideal for satellite work, weak signal VHF and UHF, and repeaters. In field operations or setups that require frequent handling, RG213 stranded core gives it an edge in flexibility and durability. If low loss is still needed in such scenarios, LMR400 UltraFlex provides a useful hybrid option, offering near identical RF performance with improved handling characteristics. Understanding your installation's physical and electrical demands is key to selecting the most durable co coax. In summary, both RG213 and LMR400 serve valuable roles in ham radio operations. RG213 remains a robust economical choice for HF and general purpose setups, offering high voltage tolerance and flexibility especially suited for portable or rugged installations. LMR400, on the other hand, shines where performance counts at VHF, UHF, and beyond. Its lower attenuation, superior shielding, and extended frequency range make it indispensable for long coax runs, repeater links, and gigahertz-based applications, though it comes at a premium. The benefits it brings in signal preservation are undeniable. The best strategy is not to pick one over the other universally, but to match each cable for the job. RG213 for flexibility, cost, and HF, LMR400 for efficiency, range, and high-performance feeds. Many ham radio stations combine both to balance budget and performance across different parts of the shack. And with that, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below, and I'll do my best to respond.